Hey, and welcome to Winning Conversations. Today, Dan and Andy get to sit down with our preteen pastor here at Heritage, Pastor Troy Ledford. He really has a heart to do anything for the kingdom. You hear that in the way he, he speaks in this conversation. He's steady, he's easygoing, and he really just wants to see kids uh, fulfill the call of God on their lives. You get to hear some of that. You get to hear about his life, um, the legacy his father left him. And uh, let's go ahead and jump right into the conversation. Well, welcome, Pastor Troy. Good to have you on the podcast. Are you excited? I am. Thank you. So excited. So I was thinking about this this morning. I was like, I know you're not, you haven't always lived in Fort Worth, right? Because you came here just a couple of years ago. So where did you come from? Okay. So uh, originally, um, uh, small town USA, Carl Junction, Missouri, growing up in a, in a Christian home. And uh, I make a distinction uh, that it was not just quote unquote Christian, it was a godly home. And that's a huge difference. I, I see uh, a lot of people say, oh, yeah, yeah, we're, we're Christian. Mm-hmm. And uh, that means um, Easter and Christmas or special occasions going to church. Um, we were in church basically any time the doors were open. And uh, many times that meant that, that we were passed out in the pew somewhere, you know, mm-hmm. because it was an all-night event. But uh, uh, I so appreciate the years that I had as a kid growing up in church, and I, I just, uh, I look back on it and I realize how much that, how much grief that's in the world that I was spared from, because the Word was a foundation in my life early, and uh, that helped me make decisions. And so what made you want to come to Texas? We were in Lexington, Kentucky for 15 years as children's pastors up there, and, um, you know, great church, uh, Love the people, still have a lot of contacts up there. Um, and with, with the Chariots of Light, we have a chapter up there now. And uh, a lot of those pastors we know from years of working with them. But uh, we came down here, uh, just felt like it was time to get back with, with our family. And uh, we, we spent a number of years uh, where our, our family time was our vacation, you know, um, most people are like, oh, yeah, we're vacationing at the beach. It's like, no, we're going to go see family because we're, we're away from them so much. And uh, so we came back this way. And, uh, you know, at the time, our heart has been ministry, and uh, I was looking for an opportunity uh, to work at a church. I've been in, in full-time ministry for 30 years, and uh, that's my heart. And uh, so... But my first start was in maintenance years ago at Church on the Move in Tulsa. And uh, so I had a little bit of background in that. And here, the first available, the only available, was in maintenance for Jerry Savelle Ministries. And, um, you know, I had a couple years here working for Scott Tripp, and uh, that was an experience. I mean, I learned a great deal in doing uh, things that I had no experience in prior to, uh, and then, of course, incorporating things that I've I've done for years, but that's how I I came to the ministry, and then as of uh, last year it was my first year as the preteens pastor here at Heritage. So, like before, <clears throat> I I always think about it because I I left an amazing church community and church to come to Texas, but my wife and I felt strongly that Texas is where we were supposed to be and where we're being pushed from. Did you and I? The reason why I, I love Heritage so much is because we found an amazing community, like a spirit-filled, alive community and an amazing church. And that was like, what a God gift, like to get, take from one environment to move us to a new one. Did you have the same experience? Like when it was it hard to leave a really good church community to come out to where you're like, ah, like I hope it's new. Like, how, yeah, do no, you re- like, how do you replace something so positive? Like, I don't know if that was what you left, like, but like I was really, really, really apprehensive about leaving like, man, this is a really good soil. Am I going to find this soil elsewhere? Mm-hmm. You know, and yeah. was that an issue? Yeah, for sure. After uh, serving 15 years at the at the last church, Grace Fellowship, uh, it was hard to leave because, you know, you're leaving uh, family and friends there. And I say family, but they become family. Yeah. For sure. Um, you know, uh, so many precious people that we had contact with, interaction with, and then to come here and it's like, okay, now all we know our, our family, you know, um, Ken and Judy are my parents, Ken and Judy Ledford. And, um, you know, they've been serving here at Heritage for a number of years. 
And um, years ago, Dad uh, would do victorious adult uh, care group, things like that. And uh, so to come out of um, knowing everyone and feeling like you are known to a complete environment where it's like, okay, I, I got to start all over. Um, but as, as much of a challenge as that was, it, uh, it was also fun in the process, meeting new people. Good. That's all. I mean, like, that's the kind of the fun part where like, no one knows who you are. Like you have preconceptions where people have like, oh, that's, you know, oh, you know, Troy does X, Troy does Y. If you need something, you know, and here you get to like, hey. <laughs> but they know your parents. Like, ev oh, yeah, I feel like code. everyone knew who, <laughs> like everyone knows Ken and Judy Ledford. I mean, at least that's how I feel because they've worked at the ministry. They've worked at the ministry for so long and they're like. <laughs> They've been at the church for so long. Okay, if you've been here, yeah, a like, long oh my God, you're you like, know, you might, you can say you anything you want right now. Did not but, land at all. But now <laughs> you're, but you're, now you're, you're Ken and Judy's son. Like that's that that's kind of your title. So I feel like you have to like make your own. Like, well, yeah. you know what I mean? Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, sure. Like, I, I mean, and that's that's been the the way it was growing up and everything. Yeah, mom and dad you guys were, are PKs. That's yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> you guys are you yeah. guys got a secret handshake so, yeah. on the table right now. <laughs> exactly. I don't even know about. But there is that knowing. You know, it's like, it's like uh, you know they were children's pastors. They were youth pastors at one time. At one point, dad had his own church, um, and then uh, to come and serve as the uh, uh, in in production, and then. Um, into uh, assistant general manager at the ministry. Uh, so a lot of people do know um, Ken. My mom works over there um, in, uh, in building uh, facilities over there. Um, but, uh, yeah, it, it, it's always been ministry. So like you said, PK. Yeah. And, uh, you know, um, but not so much. I mean, it's like um, because it wasn't the, uh, the senior pastor. When I, when I started in ministry, it was literally doing – puppets and skits in children's church because my parents were not much has changed them. sir <laughs> not, not right i mean <laughs> we still break this out on the regular okay. i now have a beard i didn't have that before but that's the only change but i feel just you know it's funny as as you as you grow and and things it's like you still feel uh the same on the inside it's like so all those experiences come in um and so yeah doing uh youth and children's ministry has been a natural thing for a number of years. But if your parents hadn't had been in the ministry, do you think that's what you would have wanted to do? Originally, uh, out of high school, I thought that I, I would either choose uh, a path in graphic design or in ministry. And both of those things were passions of mine. And uh, I put them out there. I actually, uh, it would almost be like Gideon putting out a fleece uh, because I actually applied both directions and was praying over each to see, okay, Lord, what do you have for me? And uh, honestly, everything concerning graphic design uh, was a was a no go. It just came up empty, and everything for Bible school started unfolding and just doors opening. And uh, I'm like, okay, Lord, I'm trusting you in this. And uh, it wasn't that there was any kind of a scholarship and just okay, it's just a free ride, just go. It's like no, what it was was I I knew I had a job, I had a roof over my head, and uh, we're going to launch out. And uh, that's straight out of high school going to uh, Rama in Tulsa, or Broken Arrow, rather. So there's an idea that Danny Hill on our first episode said that it's, it rings in my head all the time is um, God's plan over a good plan. He, I don't, he didn't say it exactly that way, but the whole idea of like, you know, there were good plans, but it wasn't God's plan. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so your situation was very much like, you know, graphic design was probably a really good plan but it wasn't God's plan. And so going into ministry seems like it was clearly God's plan because here we are now. Well, and the thing about it, what I, <laughs> what I appreciate about God is it's like those gifts were still there and he's allowed me the opportunity since to do all of the graphic stuff that was in my heart to do. I've done uh, a lot of that stuff on the side um, and I've been able to, to just wear many hats and actually go from one thing to the next, but really still having the focus on on ministry as a primary, um, but I mean, uh, all the tools, all the resources for the graphics things um, were given to me as well, and so I appreciate God being faithful in that, knowing that, okay, I didn't have to, you know, have years of schooling in that, and I can still uh, produce something and, and be pleased in doing it. You do youth ministry. 
I say that someone who I've like my experience in, in, and I say quote unquote ministry very loosely, <laughs> like, <laughs> like has always been in the youth, like middle school. And then now uh, my wife and I do the, we help in the one through four grade. Mm-hmm. Um, and we had the pleasure of meeting you on a Captain Rex uh, <laughs> getaway vacation <laughs> for all yeah, you parents. Uh, this was, you know, all expenses paid. It was fantastic. <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, just living the life. Uh, a salad bar 24 seven people. That so, was awesome. Yes, that yes. is awesome. I was literally love that. worth its weight in gold. Um, yeah. <laughs> we'll explain later. Anyway, <laughs> in that process though, I got to meet you and I'd never met you before. Um, and the first thing that struck me about you was you have this absolute grace and authority when you show up. And I don't know how to explain that right, but like you just exuded this quiet, calm, confident, spirit-filled grace. Like when you were talking to the kids, when you were talking to us, there was no- Calm and patience are good words for it. Like, yeah, just this like very settling approach to how you engage with people. Like, and especially with the kids, there was no highs. There was no, like, I am probably more volatile, some would say. <laughs> Preteen's a hard <laughs> we, age too. Well, we did see some of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you know. <laughs> you and I saw that we, in the we, bunks. But like, I was just taken aback by your level of- sp- the spirit filled approach you had with the kids, like very much purpose. It seemed very purposeful with your, like the presence of the Holy spirit in your life with them. And that was like, I was, I just remember that being a distinct first impression I had with you on watching you with the kids and like how, what is your approach to youth ministry? Well, and I appreciate you say that. Um, uh, I think it's funny, but there's, there's something that uh, is a word that, that I've seen and I use now and that's being intentional. And, um, you know, uh, deciding that, no, I I intend to make a difference anywhere and everywhere I can. And uh, especially uh, the more receptive someone is, then it's like, okay, uh, that's someone I can can pour more into. And, uh, you know, we, you and I know, we, we had some struggles at, at camp. What? And it was, <laughs> what? You, you don't even recall. Uh, but, uh, yeah. Um, but you see that resistance and you're like, you know, as much as that individual or those individuals, plural, uh, needed more pouring, and, you know, more sharing, more giving. And, uh, you know, it's at the same time, they, they kept trying to put the cap on. And it's like, um, you know... Um, you know, I want more for them, and I, I definitely pray for them. But my approach to to kids is just, you know, what can I invest in in this time? And um, uh, years ago, I was doing a, a youth camp with Eric Lawson, and uh, he's now pastoring in in uh, the St. Louis area. And uh, we were doing this this camp in Green Lake, Wisconsin. And uh, in between sessions, I was like bouncing off the walls, asking him questions. Like, hey, what do we do? What do you think? What do you, you know? And uh, he just said, "Look, man, I it's break. I don't, I don't think about any of that." And uh, so I've I have definitely learned to calm down, um, and just try to go with the flow, and I also uh, listen. What am I getting on the inside? Now I'm not talking my brain, because my brain will be bouncing off the wall trying to figure out what's next, and. Uh, but at the same time, the Holy Spirit knows what needs to be next. So just calm down. You know, um, it's in the peace. It's in that quiet that we can hear from him. And, uh, you know, sometimes uh, you find that it's like, I'm not getting anything, so I'm not doing anything. Um, and I can be okay with that. Um, but it's when he, when he prompts, I need to be uh, quick to do and quick to say or whatever. And, uh, you know, I was just talking to somebody about um, some people t- tend to be more um, where they beat around the bush. You know, they, they intend to say something, and they hope to get there, and they hope that you understand that. And it's, uh, it's the difference between um, reading between the lines and hope that they get it. And I, I, it occurred to me, it's like, no, when it's intentional, it can be more... Uh, in between the eyes rather than between the lines. It's going to be direct, but there's a tactful way to do that. Um, what I believe my role is, is um, found in Proverbs 22, 6, but this is not um, really my job description. This is what parents are, in t- are instructed to do, 
And uh, it says in Proverbs 22, 6, train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. And I believe that my role is to assist parents in what they're instilling within their, their kids. Um, too many parents have the concept that their kid's going to get everything that they need spiritually at church, and that it's our, our job as, as pastors, teachers, to invest all the things that their children need. And uh, it, that's just not the case. I'm here to support what they are learning at home. And uh, I do hope that they are learning at home because we don't see these kids enough uh, through the week. Um, and, uh, yeah, those camp times, it, that is definitely more concentrated time with them, but that's not a, a, an ongoing regular thing. Mm -hmm. Their parents see them. And uh, I do hope that their parents are speaking into their lives. But it is our job to to help them. Now, in, in Psalm 127, in verse 4, it, it refers to children. It says, as arrows are in the hand of a mighty man, so are children of the youth. And so arrows are directed, or they should be. Um, we, we don't just shoot our children out at random. And uh, we want we want to help guide their lives. And um, as I was looking at, at this scripture, at this verse, arrow seems so much like, you know, old school bow and arrow thing. And it's like, no, I, I think it's really more like the the modern missiles that we have. Uh, today, missiles have a guidance system. And that's, that's the voice of the Holy Spirit within us, within each of us. But uh, I believe that it's our job to train children at a young age to hear and be led so that they they reach that intended target. You know, what are they called to? Uh, see that and realize that and help build in them and equip them uh, for what they need to reach that intended target. How do you relate what you're trying to bring to your department to also like being a father? Like what, what do you do with your kids at home to make sure that they're, they're hearing that and they're being intentional also? That, that's like as a, a parent, I want to know. Yeah, no, that's a great question. And uh, um, one of the things that we do uh, every day, on the way to school, every day we have confessions. And uh, they'd be faith, faith declarations for the day. And uh, we didn't always do that. I just started seeing some things. And uh, it's like, no, we're going to change that. The mentality of things, uh, I noticed one of my kids was like, man, I can't do whatever subject it was. And uh, it's like, okay, yes, you can. And uh, so one of the things that, that we say, I mean, of course, every day we start just saying, this is the day the Lord has made. I'll rejoice and be glad in it. But we also say that today I have favor with God and man, and God and man has favor with me. And we set the tone that we're not going to have a, a bad attitude, a bad, bad start to a day. We want it to be on the right foot. And... Um, so, you know, of course, we're, we're confessing Scripture as we do that, um, but they need to be aware, I have the mind of Christ. And so we say that, that He gives me wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. And we also talk about being Spirit-led. Uh, one of the things that, one of our confessions is that, uh, which is Scripture, it says that He's given us the Holy Spirit, our guide in all truth, and we say He shows us things to come. We actually say, I know things that others don't know because he tells me and I listen. So that's building within my kids and myself as I say it, this anticipation of being led by the Spirit and being aware that it's not just listening with my natural ears. Uh, I'm not necessarily, <laughs> I'm not expecting an audible voice from heaven, you know, um, you know, like God talking to Paul or something. We just fall out of our seats and we're like, who are you, Lord? <laughs> it's like, no, it's on the inside. Yeah. So, yeah, that's a daily thing with us. I love that. I love that. Basically, what you're saying is my mornings need improvement. Yeah, I was <laughs> like, we're going like, to make some changes like, uh, tomorrow. Like, notes to <laughs> self. Yes, this is something we need to Change how do. you start your day. <laughs> it's true. But it's true, though. Like, that time, I've, I've noticed, like, that time in the morning with Addie where I'm making her breakfast or we're sitting and I'm having my coffee and she's having breakfast, like, th that time could be useful. Like, we could be doing something constructive to, like, start our day because it all starts there. Like, 
I've noticed like if something goes wrong in the morning, my whole day is just like off. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like the whole day feels off. But if you start, if you start in the morning with something like a confession or something positive, then your whole day could be, you know, all these, th you're opening the door for all these good things to happen. Well, see, one of the things that we, we started saying was, I love learning. <laughs> it's like, of course I you should be. I love school. I love yes, going I, to I, school. <laughs> I love learning, and we say learning is fun, learning is easy. And, you know, because the Word talks about uh, receiving wisdom, receiving instruction, and uh, we have to be open to that. If we think any, any particular subject is too hard or it's impossible, then we, uh, we actually close ourselves to the wisdom that we could be receiving. Mm -hmm. And so just having the mindset to uh, receive instruction. And, uh, you know, I, I love, of course, um, how everything is Scripture-based. And uh, talking about, you know, one of the things that we say is that I represent the kingdom of God on the earth. Uh, and that kingdom, according to the Word, is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Uh, so that should be something that is seen in us. Daniel, you and I were talking about that this morning. It was like, okay, you know, you're wearing your gear. Somebody's going to see, uh, like today, yours says following Jesus on your shirt. And it's TM. like, <laughs> you know, it's like <laughs> you're, you're ready. But beyond that, yeah. you have to have this mindset, yes, I do <clears throat> represent the kingdom of God. And uh, so what does that look like? And it should be um, a victorious life. You know, as I dropped off Jaden at school today, she knew I was going to do this interview. <laughs> and this is, you know, winning conversations. So uh, she said, she said, love you, Dad. Uh, go win some conversations. <laughs> it's like, nice. yes. I love that. Nice. <laughs> well, I like the accountability of it. Like I talk about like, like I, I spent a lot of my life not being vocal about my faith or not being proactive in my faith or, you know, keeping it hidden, so to speak for fear of my witness being not great. <laughs> and that is where I've had a complete 180 with my faith and everything else. Like, no, 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 I need you to know I'm a Christian because it makes me accountable to how I should be behaving. Ooh, that's yes. good. Like, I want you to know before you ever meet me that I'm a Christian because then I've set the table for how my behavior must be. Yes, yeah. that's good. And so, like, when people have the stickers, like, on their bumper sticker and they're driving, like, complete buffoons, I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> Like, oh, yeah. you know, I, I'm not, this is not, yeah, no shots right fired to anybody at this church. Say. This is no example here, specifically yeah. at this community. I'm saying <laughs> that I'm very much of a, my witness is so important to me because it's the one thing I can control on, on how we are interacting. So if I'm behaving a certain way and I say that I'm this, well, these two things must line up. Right. Otherwise, yeah, what am I doing? What, what am I doing? And, and that's kind of where going back to how you behave, the, like, like I've yet to see you not behave like the man of God that I know you are. <laughs> you haven't been in the car. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that was you I was following so, to church. Yeah. That could have been you. I'm not, I'm no, not saying I, it I was. Actually, no, it, this is funny because uh, a lot of those things actually happen right in the middle of our conversations and uh, these confessions that we're having. <laughs> And it's like, okay, I love that. that was a major distraction, and I could respond to that, but I just keep on going with, you know, uh, just the other day, somebody did something, and, uh, you know, I, I said I said it out loud, it's just me in the car, and I said, no, that was actually flippable, okay? And the world would respond in that way when I say flippable, Um you know, give them the bird, flip uh, them the finger. Oh, I was like, like oh, I, turning it upside down. What do you want to do that? And then my, I realized, my I realized mind. I'm in the church van. That is not flippable. <laughs> <laughs> so no. Oh my gosh. Uh, it's I, like, I, no, you do have to, you know, you're, you're measured and you do check yourself. And it's like, no, even though that thought happens, I still know who I am and uh, I know who I represent. And that's all the time everywhere. And, uh, you know, where the world would say, yes, that is flippable or honkable or whatever. It's like, no, I'm not going to respond that way. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's a choice. And that's one thing that, that I, I appreciate about uh, growing up in a godly home is, is the decisions that we make. The quality decisions make a quality life. And, you know, some decisions we make and they're made, it's settled. We don't have to ask that question again. And one of those things for, for us, and it continues to be, is church attendance. It's like, okay, uh, are, 
We don't wake up Sunday morning and ask, are we going to church today? No, yes, we are going to church. Mm -hmm. Um, And um, we're we're definitely getting fed. We're definitely going to be there, and we're going to do our part. Um, But there are decisions like that that once made, I don't have to go back and ask that again. And, um, you know, um, that contributes to consistency because that's a choice. That's a decision I've already made, and it's a done deal. It's settled in my mind. And uh, but so much of this goes back to the foundation of the word that we have within us. And um, because of that, we can have stability, even when uh, our flesh, mm-hmm. our soul <laughs> may want to do something else. We have to go back to that foundation. It's like, no, that's not who we are. And so I'm not going to respond, not going to react that way. So you only very recently got put in this position um, over preteens. I want to know what... What do you see for your future? Are you wanting to stay in this role or is there a goal that you're trying to meet or what do you feel like God has for you for your future? Okay, well, I appreciate you asking it that way. Um, It's totally Mm open-ended. But uh, at at any church I've served in, uh, I've never counted it like a a stepping stone. And, um, you know, whatever that role is, I want to do it to, to the best of my ability and fulfill what the need is. And, um, you know, um, in fact, when I was, uh, when I first came to JSMI, um, the man over me told me, he said, you know, just so you know, uh, this job does not lead to pulpit ministry. And um, I'm like, okay. I mean, and that was not my expectation in, in maintenance. Um, but at the same time, I also know that the word says that a man's gift makes room for him. And so, and it has, it's opened up this opportunity. Uh, I didn't ask for it. Mm -hmm. Uh, It came to me and I appreciate that. Um, But uh, I believe that I'll continue in this role for as long as as God has me here. Um, I'm not looking for uh, anything other than the advancement of the kingdom of God and these kids. Um, One of the things that um, I've seen recently uh, there's a, a student that I had in my children's church years ago who's now a young adult going to Jesus school in Florida. And it's like, okay, that's my goal. I want to see more of that. Yeah. You know, um, you know, people, you know, uh, students, children being raised up in, in the Word, in Word of Faith. Um, and I have to say Word of Faith because... Uh, I had an interaction with somebody, and they said, "Word of faith, that's new. I've never heard of that." And I'm, <laughs> I'm thinking, "Where have you been?" I mean, but you know, that's the thing. You know, we take for granted um, what we know and uh, the foundation that's within us. It, it seems uh, so commonplace, but it's not. And you know, I want to, I want to have a part in investing in these kids, and then they get launched out, and they make an impact. They make a difference all over the world. And I'm seeing that, um, you know, they don't just stay uh, in that local church. They grow up, they, they become adults with families, and they move, and, and they impact um, the world around them. So that's my goal. And if, um, if I do that for the next 20 years right here, I'm completely content. Uh, in fact, I'm honored. It's a privilege to be able to do that. That's good. So one of our favorite questions, um, because we ask it on every single episode, our motto is making winners in life. And it's a question that we ask on the end of every one of our conversations is, what does that mean to you? So, so what does making winners in life mean to you? Okay, so to be a winner, you have to know that we are, we are victorious in life. We're, that's what we're called to. We're to be overcomers. And we overcome, the word says, by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. And uh, the, thing of, the thing about being in children's ministry, youth ministry, um, preteens, is they have to know who they are in Christ. And that's building within them this understanding and uh, so that it's second nature for them to win because they realize the victory has already been won. And so they just need to step into that and walk that out by faith. Uh, otherwise, um, I, I believe that they, they could go through their day and, and just feel like, man, every day uh, the devil's just eating my lunch. And it's like, no, 
uh, he doesn't have that place. According to the word, he's under our feet. And that's because Jesus defeated him. Uh, but they have to have this understanding, according to the word, who they are in Christ and, and be able to live that. And so that they can uh, be a winner in life because they, they know who they are in Christ. So to me, making a winner in life is just continuing to, to open up the word and rightly divide the word. Uh, so many times uh, in class, kids are given so many scriptures, and I'm going to do that. Uh, I've told them, my opinion doesn't really matter. I mean, uh, if, it's not, if it's not in the word, then what is it? Um, that's opinion, uh, speculation, whatever. And I tell them, you know, um, I'm going to give you chapter and verse because it doesn't matter what Pastor Troy thinks. It's what I know according to the Word. And that's what is, is going to build that foundation in them. That's something they can fall back on. And that's going to cause them to be a winner. Um, so it, it all goes back to the Word. Well, this has been awesome. Um, obviously, I've always appreciate every time we get a chance to, to talk and, and cut it up a little bit. And it was amazing to have you here and to have a winning conversation with you because I think your story, uh, who you are as a person, what you do here at this church is so important. And I think a lot of people don't know like the ins and outs. And there's so much more we didn't even talk about. I mean, we literally just scratched the surface of the things of who you are, what you've done, your experiences. But uh, it was such an, uh, just a blessing to have you here and have you spend time with us and have this conversation. So I just want to say thank you very much. This is, this is awesome. Well, thank you. I appreciate you. Be sure to tune in next Friday as we continue to have these incredible conversations, and we will see you next week.